In this video, I'm gonna show you how to turn all of these parts into a rig for an ATEM Mini Pro. I'm gonna do a teardown for you so that you can see all of the parts that go into making this because you may wanna make something like it, it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but it's highly customizable. And all of these parts are sort of, they're very universal camera parts. I've just taken a lot of time to work out the right lengths, patching cables and the overall design to like get these pieces in there. So take from this what you will and maybe you wanna make a version of this. I'll have all the links to these parts and where you can purchase them. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna take this one off. This is a small rig handle with a NATO clamp. So I actually use this on my C200. And the best thing about it too is that you can actually screw this and then change the orientation of which way your NATO clamp is running. So normally on the C200, I have it going directly in. But for this rig, this has a NATO rail on a rail block and that just slides in there and locks down. So that's my handle that I use to carry this when I don't have uh, a camera mounted. Next up is this uh, Lilliput monitor. I can unplug the HDMI cables and then I can actually unscrew this. I always recommend if you can get a monitor with SDI, you know, it probably costs you another hundred bucks, but there's so many times when you're on a production and you need to plug in something. And if you've only got HDMI, it's going to be a real pain. Um, so I think in the long term, you're going to get much more value for your money if you get something with HDMI and SDI as well. So this is a 10.1 inch monitor. It's great because it sits to the length of the ATEM pretty well. As you saw before, it also works as an auto cue. On the back, I've got a 75 millimeter small rig monitor mount, just so that I can mount that from behind and it's centered and it's weighted. And then I can articulate that as I need to. I've got another cold shoe here. I like this one because it's got tension in it. So you don't actually have to like tighten it or loosen it. You can just move the monitor and it'll hold. So now we've got the ATEM Mini Pro ISO itself. I wanted to find a mount for it that was really easy to get in and out. I didn't want to permanently fix it into a case because there are times I might want to just take this unit itself and not the rig, or maybe like there's times that I've like rented out this unit and we don't need the whole rig. That was important to me. Also because it's mounted vertically, all of these ports are really easy to access. So we can just take them out one at a time. Take out the network connection unscrew the power. And then this is just a tablet mount that I've mounted vertically in the back. So it clamps in there and it also has these rails to sit on. So it's really not going anywhere. I could tip this whole unit all around, um, tilt it up and down on the tripod and it's very firmly fixed in place. I like it because that means this unit is just in its original form factor. It hasn't had anything stuck to it. Um, I could resell it and it's, you know, perfectly in good nick. On the base, you'll see I've got my two rails and then I've got this crossbar, which I sort of think is like a bird perch. And these are all the devices that are rigged along the back to keep them secure. So let's just start by taking some of them off. I've got a two pin HDMI for this Teradek Bolt 500 XT. This is probably the best Teradek device that I've used. Some of the other ones I feel like drop out a bit. Um, this one's pretty solid. And it's expensive, but it's also good. And I have a seven inch um, monitor that, that this can feed to as well. Really nice way to have wireless monitoring feeding into your set. I've got another rail clamp on the bottom here. These are, they're probably about $7 each. So they're pretty affordable. And then there's a thumb screw that just bolts that into the bottom of that bolt. See what I did there? And then I'm just using these along the rails to, to tighten it down and then I can release it. And this is something that I would normally have mounted on the back of my C200, which is recording here at the moment. Again, it's trying to think through this rig in a way that's universal so that even when you've outgrown the ATEM Mini Pro, if you have a rig like this, you can use this on other stuff and you can tear it down, you can build it up. It's not like building something that can only be used for the ATEM Mini Pro. All right, so that's the Teradek. <clears throat> build a little pile over here. What's next? All right, we've got a Cube 755 while we're on the Teradek here. And on the back of that, I've got a Raspberry Pi because I haven't fully rigged that up yet. I'm just piggybacking on that at the moment. So this is the Cube 755. I've taken the wireless things off because I was actually just using the ethernet straight into my switch here. I gotta be honest, I don't 100% love it. I, I find it a little finicky in terms of some latency and dropout. Um, 
But what it does have advantage over some of the other ones that I've used is that I can have it so it switches on automatically and sends a feed into the network from SDI or HDMI. So basically when I power on this rig, this is sending out video that can be watched on an iPad straight away. So that's pretty neat. It's just that for a sort of like two to $3,000 device, I would like to love it more than I do and I don't. On the back of that is a very different device, although I kind of like this case that I got for it because it looks kind of the same, which is a Raspberry Pi 4 in the eight gigabyte. And that's actually what I'm running Companion on, uh, which is great because on the, on the back here, the USB 3 and 2, I can just like plug uh, a USB straight into that and then the Stream Deck will run and operate the ATEM Mini, which is all internally enclosed on this network here. We've got the Ethernet for the Pi, audio out, micro HDMI fed into port number three. You may want to instead like SSH into the Raspberry Pi through the Mac instead. And then the Pi runs off a USB-C five volt connection. And what makes this powerful and also the router that I'll show you in a sec is that when you're running things off, starting with like a 12 volt DC, it makes it very easy to consolidate all of the power requirements. Moving on. All right, speaking of routers, I've got this GLINet Beryl 1300 something. Again, it runs off a USB-C power around about 15 watts, and it's got a WAN and two Ethernet ports. And there's a lot of connectivity options with this, which makes it really neat. Now, the reason I've got a whole router in this rig is because I move around a lot with this thing, go between home and the office to a shoot location, and I don't want to have to change my network settings every time I turn up. So this is great because this router means that all of the IP addresses for Companion and the ATEM Mini and the, the Teradek Cube and all that kind of stuff, they're all the same. So when I switch it on, I know it's gonna work. I don't have to spend a couple of minutes reconfiguring it. But it's got gigabit ethernet. It's got a wireless bridge mode. So when I turn this on, this automatically finds my office network or home network, or I can connect it to a location that I'm at and it'll act as a bridge. So then my laptop can be running on Wi-Fi, connect to this router, and then connect to whatever the Wi-Fi is there. Often when you have a device like a cube and you're trying to connect an iPad to it so that you can see the video signal, you don't have internet connected to this device. So by this cube being connected to my network, which has internet, then when I connect my phone or my tablet, then I'm still gonna be able to get email and just like operate as usual. This router really needs its own episode because there's a lot that I could go into with that and I've just found it powerful enough to do what this ATEM Mini Pro is doing. I have my power, so that's what's being plugged into the DC. And I have a USB-C hub. This end goes to my MacBook. I can get the power in. I've got two HDMI outs here, although on the Mac it's the same picture. I've also got a display port out here, USB 2, USB 2, two USB 3s, SD card reader, and then an ethernet. This just lives in the device, which I like because then I can just plug it in and it's all part of the system. Don't have to think about any of that. What it's, what it's connected to is another rail block and uh, this item here, which I'll, I'll get into in a sec because this is also one of the main sort of structural items within here. Also in this rig, I have a, a Camlink 4K, which is Elgato, which is nice. I gotta say, like after all of this rigging, there are times where I go to a shoot and all I need to take is this because I just need to take an HDMI out. I need to bring some, someone in on Zoom so that they can like see what the picture is. And that's all you need. Rather than having a whole lot of different power connectors, I wanted to have everything powered through the one interface. So this is where I've got this DC barrel in here. I kept everything as a 12 volt in because that's what the ATM Mini Pro is running. And then as many devices as I can, I've been getting them run on a 12 volt circuit. I can actually plug in a DTAP and then in a production battery, plug it in like that. And these are great for flying because you can take them on your carry on. This battery outputs 14.8 volts with a 10 amp max. So that's about 140 watts, which is being powered into this system. Depending on what's plugged in here, it'll run for a longer or shorter period of time. I think with everything powered up the way I've got it here, I'm getting about an hour to an hour and a half running off a single battery. But then if your battery runs out and you've got access to mains or you're just set up for the day, I also wanted this to be able to plug off AC power. 
So I have a nice big mains power here. This is 12 volts putting out up to 10 amps so it can handle a lot of current. Got some HDMI cables. On the other end of this DC is a splitter. I've got a four here, but you can also buy an eight. So I can unplug the switcher. I've just taped these two together so that they're the same length when they stick out the back here. And then this is just a right angle adapter. Now it's important to get the size right when you're doing DC power. The ATEM Mini Pro and the Streaming Bridge use a 5.5 millimeter outer barrel with a 2.5 millimeter inner barrel. And what you'll find is that most other equipment like computer switches and routers and that kind of stuff, they actually use a 5.5 millimeter outer barrel and a 2.1 millimeter inner barrel, which means that even though they're both 12 volts, they, they're not gonna plug into each other. So what I've got here is an adapter which receives a 2.1 millimeter inner barrel here and then is a 2.5 on the other side. So that means for the streaming bridge, um, I can get it right angled so it's not sticking out too far and also it adapts into the rest of my circuitry which is all 2.1 millimeter DC connections. I may buy an eight because I ended up using about eight connections. So from this four-way extension, I just wanted to connect to a Teradek device, which is male to male. Um, so this is a 2.1 millimeter inner female barrel. It's very handy. At some point you're gonna need these, so I would say get them. The other cable that's is just handy is this extension cable. It's about a foot. It just helps the cable go out to hook up to the monitor. So while we're on power, you'll notice there's a DTAP splitter here. And that's useful because, for example, the this dummy battery for the um, 5D Mark IV has a D-tap on the other end. So I can plug that straight into B-mount battery D-tap port if I want to power the 5D Mark IV off that. Make sure that you get a cable that has the down conversion in it because this is outputting 14 volts and the um, 5D Mark IV only needs, uh, I forget what it is, like seven or eight volts. Got a couple of these DC barrel to two pin connections. They're only about 20 bucks off Amazon. I'll put the link in there. I've also got a D-tap to a two pin that's powering one of the Teradek devices. And then the other D-tap, if I just wanted to get the ATAM Mini and I just wanted to connect this barrel, an actual locking connector. I've looked so long and hard to try and find that. And then this will power straight into the battery. And so you'll see in this most simple form, you can power the ATAM Mini Pro off a production battery. These are great because these are so universal. The lights use them, cameras use them. Even if you don't end up using them at some point on the A10 Mini, you buy a V-mount battery, it's gonna work with all of your other gears. This is the best cable that I could find. It has a locking connector that is a 2.5 millimeter in a barrel. And it's important because there's a lot of connectors around that have, like the barrel's too long, so it can't actually screw in the locking connector. All right, just to finish off the power, the only, piece in this whole rig that is custom built is this D-tap because I wanted to find a way to bring a uh, DC barrel into a, a female D-tap and I could not find any on Amazon or around the place. And so I made my own and I soldered this. It's really basic. It's, it's not like soldering a, a circuit board or whatever, like there's big pins in there. So pretty easy level if you wanted to try a bit of soldering yourself. But this just enables to use the power from the, the AC adapter or else the V-mount battery to bring this into this D-tap splitter so that I've got four D-taps that if I need to plug in any other things that I can access that. Because I don't need it to be very long, I just made it like a couple inches. All right, so we're getting down to the bare bones of this and you'll notice I've still not picked up a single tool. All of these are sort of hand operated. You don't actually need anything to adjust these parts. I've got a streaming bridge that's in here permanently. I've got a five port switch and I've got an HDMI splitter. While it is really convenient to have an actual router within this rig to maintain all of the same IP addresses, it's equally as important to have a switch. Running everything off ethernet just makes everything faster and smoother, more reliable, and you're always gonna need more ports. So five is um, enough for this. There have been times when I've need to use like a fixed IP address from a venue that I've gone to and I can't use the router. And so that's where having a switch at least gets all of this onto the network. So I've just got two six inch rails, top and bottom, and then a 12 inch rail along the back, which I've mounted different things to. You could bring it down to 10 if you didn't have as many things on there and take this off. Just going to release the back here and loosen these rails. 
and I can slide these rails out. So with those rods gone, these devices now swing apart. They're not actually bolted at all. They're just held using a little bit of pressure and a little bit of like rubber matting just so they don't slide across and they actually stay in place pretty firmly. And then once everything's around it, they don't move. The other reason I wanted to use this particular network port is because it runs on a 12 volt power. So that just makes it very easy to keep everything the same. And then this HDMI splitter runs off a five volt DC. So I needed something to down convert and move that out of the way. So I've got this USB A connector going to a DC 2.1 barrel. And then I've also got a five volt USB A running to USB C for the Raspberry Pi. If we remember the Pi relied on USB C. And on the other side, this router also ran off USB C. These are all five volt connections. So what I've got on the back here are two down converters. So these take the 2.1 barrel and then have the USB coming out of there. So for most devices, they're running on the sort of 12 to 14 volt, which these can handle that sort of range. And then for the other devices that need the five volt, these two down converters are doing the work there. And it means that we can just use the single power adapter to run the whole unit. This is the first time I'm picking up a tool, which is just a Phillips head to loosen off that D-tap splitter. Get rid of that, chuck that on the pile of cords. Now, these two down converters are actually done on with the double-sided Velcro. Don't use normal Velcro because it'll wobble around a bit. If you use the double-sided Velcro, it sticks flat and it just stays on very well. Um, keeps a nice low, low profile there. And now we're down to the basic rig. Put these six inch rod through, lock it down. All right, so this is the basic rig, a tablet mount on a rail system, a back part that can be compressed to hold a few items in there. So you don't necessarily need all of the items that I had on display today, but very easy just to put that ATEM in there. And then to mount it, we've just got a Manfrotto 501 tripod plate with a cheese plate and then a small rig a rail block here. And that slides in like that and you can lock that down and then that can be mounted onto a tripod. If you're just sitting on desktop, you don't actually need that. So you can put that to the side and then it's sitting pretty flat. Even if you're not getting onto a tripod, this could be a way to think about your desk space, keeping that space available for computers and stuff like that and still being able to connect in all of the connections. All right, so I'm gonna take this off again. On the back here, I have a small rig V-mount for the battery. So the second tool I'm gonna to use is just an Allen key. This is bolted to the back. Keep that in place. I'm gonna take this other six inch rail apart. So I've got two sets of six inches. So structurally, this is what's at the heart of this. Kemvade cheese plates, they're about 12 bucks off Amazon. And then I've got two small rig rail blocks which are mounted above them as well, which they're about $15 a pair. So that's quite scalable to whatever size rig you wanna build. And then I've got a couple of little cold shoes if you're just looking to get some of those mounts on. And that brings us to the final piece, which is really where it all began, which was looking for a way to mount the ATEM Mini Pro onto something. I think it was probably about 30 bucks off Amazon, tuck form. Nothing special, but the mounting holes here are the right size for this small rig cheese plate. So that's great. There's no drilling involved if you get that small rig cheese board. Um, and then the other thing you can do with this is if you put the ATM on there, put this mount just on this cheese plate, get it on a tripod up off the ground so you're not stepping on it if you're out in the field. And then you'll see on the side here, I've mounted this in a way that it's not blocking the air intake so that it or the heating and come out through it and on the exhaust side that uh, the heat is passing through it and being an external rig um, there's free airflow all around it so i don't need a fan and with those devices like the teradex and stuff they get really hot there's some spacing in between them just to make sure that they're not slammed up against each other if you already own an atem mini i'm sure you know that you're never going to buy a camera again you're just going to be buying hdmi connections so when you break the rig down and spread it out on a table, this is what it looks like. It's probably taken me about six months of trial and error just to find all of these parts. Things like getting half inch cables or one foot HDMIs and really to 
bring the units closer together so that there's less cabling, which always takes up volume, so that there's more space in your kit for things that are actually fun, like lenses and cameras and stuff of higher value than little connectors. Hopefully there's a bunch of ideas in there for you and I'm going to put links in the description below so that you can go find these parts and apply them to your own rig. Hopefully it makes your rigs better and you do more productions. Let me know what you think and if this has inspired you with some ideas of how you could adjust this to your own rig. And I look forward to speaking to you again in another video, kind of bring you some more production tips and behind the scenes ideas.